Mm-hmm. Welcome to the 92nd live stream. We're there. Wow, we're getting old. Yeah. Ali. Yeah? Do we do we get a pension for this? I mean, I've been getting a check. What about you? Oh. Oh, should I not have said something? <laughs> I mean, we weren't playing awkward. Pink Fluffy, so... <laughs> I get my whole two pennies a year! Yeah! I get paid in hugs, don't worry. Um, I I, and never... I'll collect them if I ever get to go to a convention with you guys. I don't know if I'm going to any future content. Anyway, um, 90 second live stream. We got people. We got an alley claw. Hey, how's it going? We, we got a fluffy's eye. Yay! Uh, I think there's 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 a living dead. Maybe. Maybe the one who's talking. Maybe possibly. I don't know. I don't have a mirror in front of me. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Well, I would just end up staring at it, posing. Because you're getting references for drawing, right? You're just using yourself as a reference because that's a completely valid thing, right? Totally. That's why See? I do it. <laughs> See, I brought it back to the art stream. Oh, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we got everyone else who's listening to us. Lovely. Yay, we love you listeners. Yay. So, you come and you tolerate us. It's a great time. Tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> Today's eggy theme is birds. Birds. People draw birds. birds. I like that. I'm going to try. There's, there's try. bird horses. And like bird mm -hmm. cat horses. And bir is there a bir bird dog horse? There is now. <laughs> we should like an Anubis Pegasus pony. That, that should be a thing. <laughs> Someone draw well, there the was bird the, um, There was the Sphinx pony. That's a cat. That's, That's a cat. Thing. It's true. You really like though. their cats. <laughs> I mean, all ponies are cats, right? Mm -hmm. Dogs, mm -hmm. dogs chase birds too. It's true. Right. I mean, I've I've played my fair share of duck hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I've walked actual dogs. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa! Get out of here with experience in life. <laughs> all right, so let's talk this crab that CPC has drawn here. Shiny. They're, they're, they're the first picture I looked at. Oh, the whole thing is a crab. Yes. Oh my god. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dang good cool. crab. That's really awesome. He he must be very proud of his coral reef. Shiny. Like, I'm sorry. Is, it's just stuck in from? my head. Moana. <laughs> The giant crab with the treasures uh, on its back. Oh god, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just stuck in my head. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Just smack me if I get annoying. It's <laughs> it's fine, Allie. We'll get over <laughs> it one day. Uh huh. Sure. That's so what they all CPCs tell me. First then? Yeah. So CPC, yes. you got any questions cool. offhand about this? Oops. I need my tablet. That's useful. <laughs> yes, it is. It's very useful. You can use it for drawing. Oh, I, I use it to hold up my uh, pencil collection. <laughs> uh, it's even more useful if you have a pen to go with it. Um, I will commence looking for mine. Oh, wait, here it is. Cool. Oh, and then I dropped the tablet. Ooh. It has CPC given us some nice gift. CPC? Are you here? Girl? Do we want to just move to Fluffy's eyes? Oh, there, AFK. We're going to move to Fluffy's eyes picture. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so, pull down me. to the left. Yes. Fluffy's eyes picture. Which is not pony for once. In fact, it has no characters in it yet. Gasp! No pony. I, I I told Ali about this idea when I came up with it that like this is a, a, existing. Yay! <laughs> They're in the wrong port. Ah ha! <laughs> <laughs> Poor CPC. Oh, she keeps doing that. She does need a little helper bunny on her desk to point at the screen and be like, "This is the channel. This is what you need." I agree. Uh, actually, we're just gonna hire Fluffy or Fluffy's eye to be that. Oh, and now 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 the. I have a critique for your art, Fluffy. Mm-hmm. You, you need a pony, 
right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank there you, you go. Much. There's your even, totally <laughs> legit critique. Even, even though there are no species in this world, I will make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to add some fluff. Yep, like C yeah. CCP's got you some good critique there. Uh, my, my picture's too square. I can't fit it on the canvas without being too zoomed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us what's going on here, because there's yes. just a lot of blobs of yes. color. So um, there's trees in the foreground. There are I don't see that. At, what? Oh, really? No, I see. I see blobs. Oh, uh, are you are you zoomed out, or is there just not enough detail? I don't know. Not... They're, they're definitely leafy trees. It's missing the separation between them. When you look at a bunch of trees together, you get a visual okay. separation between trees. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I understand that. Like, I need to to put. I did sort of a little bit of like, okay, there'd be more like uh, this bit right in the middle here at the bottom as an example. Oh, there's more shadow on this side and more highlight on this side, but like I need to do more of that to like bring out the shapes, I guess. Yeah, a little, Ew. a little just changes in hue or saturation on your greens, and it will give a good visual separation between them, and you can still keep up the same. Um, the the same uh what the heck is it take me yeah the the same contrast there you go oh, okay yeah i mean i i had sort of like various layers of like i uh, sort of start off with like a basic color and i go over it with different i do dark darker darker and then lighter and lighter uh, and sort of work the sides of it in but um yeah, I'll, I'll play around with like the dark hues I've got there, but you think I should sort of have like a hue change on the individual trees, like it shifts slightly. Yes. I f yeah, I think um. Yeah, I think all that plus having edges, because like like Zom said, there's like usually you see, not just with color changes, but you really see hard edges, and a lot of this is like, it's like a soft go from dark to light, sort of like if you had. It kind of mm -hmm. reminds me of a sponge technique when you have a sponge and you just kind of like s dapper in yeah, where it all goes. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, giving your trees some edges will mm. definitely be helpful. Maybe some like different shapes, like because mm. right now the uh, curve of the whole trees here is pretty similar. Maybe have some more pieces that like mm. really jump up, have that I break could, up of yeah, the line. What I was sort of trying to go with the bits that sort of stick it out a bit. I was, I was sort of like, I'm not really sure. I was trying to almost go for like a sort of where the horizon's like curved in almost like a fishbowl sort of way. I was, mm -hmm. I, I was sort of trying to go for that, but also sort of not really sure what I was doing with that. So like the mm -hmm. horizon's a bit silly when it comes to the layers. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I mean, it's all good guess, to experiment. I guess it kind of looks like you're looking out of a clearing. Um, and I think it would bend like that in real life, sort of, as you're looking at it, the things mm -hmm. going around you. Is um so I'm, I'm guessing this is a fantasy world, right? Yes, this is the fantasy world in the game I'm making. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry, I'm just asking the obvious questions for fun. You know how it goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this this is kind of like the world curving. So like this is. Uh, no, it's like, I don't know if they're like giant rocks or giant tree roots or something, but like basically big arches that just like are sticking out and then curving around and sometimes going back in. And mm -hmm. sometimes twisting around a bit, mm -hmm. um, just sort of floating over, just to create create some sort of kind of like a dome. I guess. No, yeah, I totally get that. I th I think honestly, um, a lot of a lot of these problems, like cleaning up, I think, because this is just a work in progress. Yes, yes. So I think a lot of this will come together with more refinement, showing more edges. You know, because mm -hmm. right now it, a lot of things are very. Like uh, it, it's like the what's what what is that word I'm looking for? It's like you you put in the what you need and where it is, and then it'll blocked come to in. refining it. Yeah, blocked in. Thank you. And I think uh, a lot of things that will help you going forward is to start isolating and making hard edges to really make that detail mm. stick out. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, the thing I think sort of three stages thing because I had the first stage where kind of like oh here's where these um. These, these arching things will go um, and then I sort of did a very basic very loose rough like the trees were exactly as they are now but mm -hmm. like just very very rough and mm -hmm. you know, whatever mm -hmm. and I just did different layers uh, so there's like a front layer there's a middle layer of trees and there's a back layer of trees and then I just like 
lowered the I made everything tra uh, grayscale and then just lowered the opacity of the whole thing and that's what mm -hmm. what you see in the background there because um, mm -hmm. I just I just went over it so then then I guess like you said it's just like going over to block everything this way and then just go over again and put more detail in like LD and y yourself said um, so I think th three three times going over it I think would be good <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, oh, I, yeah. I just dumped a picture beneath it oh of a, down. Of, of a forest. Ooh. This picture just showed up today. It's Cape Breton. But anyway, <laughs> you see this, the differences in trees that are even blocked together? Like if we were to go mm -hmm. enhance. <laughs> oh my god. Enhance. <laughs> enhance more. Um, right. If you're going to look in here, zoom in way far in. In what area? Any any area. area. Let's say let's okay. say just the green blob over towards the frontier. Um, uh, this okay. area, right? Oh my gosh! Where's my? Where, where, where? Helps mm -hmm. my opacity's up. There we go. This yes. blob here that I'm drawing in brown on trees. Just, Very good choice. These trees right here. Trees. That's Very good. similar <laughs> color, but we can see the visual separation right here. Mm -hmm. You can tell that those are two different bodies, and they're just sitting together. And it's because of that blackness that sits right here, right? Mm -hmm. Nice separation. And even even towards this area here, where it's just a big blob of orange and green and little red sprinkled in there, we still have the edge definition going over here and up here. You see? Well, maybe hmm. not because yeah. I just colored over it. But <laughs> you get the idea. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, I can see. I mean, looking around all like the hills and everything as well, which just look fluffy because of the tree. Uh, you can sort of see where like each tree kind of begins, I guess. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, but in the background, there's also like a lot less detail. Like I'm still trying to sort of like put like the leaves, but just like make them smaller. But like, I guess there's not quite as much distance as this. But like, it, it, looking at this, it's kind of interesting how all the blobs in the back are just blobs and they mm -hmm. don't have any like definition of detail on them it's all about tricking the eye at that point like uh yeah. i think bob ross would be a great person to watch because like he can probably describe it better than i could but it's like using simple marks to like trick the eye to believe it's there and you already have the pre-existing information that people understand like oh, these mountains are covered in trees, so therefore, yeah, I kind of see, like, the bumpy color changes of lights and darks in the valleys, but, like, there's still trees. It's all covered in trees. Yeah, nature is okay. hard, but it's awesome. Mm. It's I, I actually love drawing nature stuff. I suck really bad at, like, anything like buildings and rooms and cities and streets and stuff, because it's just, like... Uh, I cannot handle all those geometric shapes. But everything <laughs> has to be exactly in order. But like trees, I'm just like, yeah, I can just like do this twisty branch and, and everything is, and it's I always find it easier. So there's, obviously there's still like a lot more to go, especially in like the digital painting side of it, rather than like actually drawing. But it's I always find it fun to like look at and look at people painting and drawing. All right. So yeah, I can see how. Is there anything else like that you can see that I've done so far? I feel like the the so those um fruit things. Those were on like a layer above the trees, um, and there was like a bit of leaves, kind of like um mm -hmm. there was some leaves on top of them, blending them into the trees. But then when I put like the glowing effects on, they like only affected what was inside the folder, and it, it I could have I could have fixed that, but it didn't look as nice fixed. So I was like. I'll leave it like that, but then I have to kind of spread the leaves out and blend them in. To, and then, oh, look, cool. It looks like the light from the thing is actually casting on the leaves and putting that contrast there. But I think the one on the right's a bit messy and I need to like blend that a bit better. Um, other than that, I'm not really sure what... Uh, I, I, and like clean up any floating leaves and like the, the some of the fruits in the background of the upside down trees are like hanging off of them. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, that's all like the cleaning. Like you say, it's just like I put the detail in and I go like work it. Just keep refining. It'll get there. Yeah. We believe Because like, I, I like these fruits already because they have nice hard edges to make them stand with the tree. And like so, yes. these little bits here, like they feel like there's little leaves over top. You, you know, you mm. got those. Maybe here you could have a little more hard edges since it feels more like a a soft blur in some of these leaves since they're mm. so small. Yeah, it's, have, really like, hard, you know, it's really hard to make them like 
sharp. They're very soft. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, this this might be the point in where you go in with like a round brush and just kind of yeah, like yeah. add mm. in yourself. Mm. I I also I think I sort of I I they are like quite hard edge, but I also think I like blurred very gently. Like the I I usually go on the edge of shapes just to make them a bit softer, so they're not <laughs> quite so harsh. And I, I don't know if you can see zoomed out, but there's like swirly shapes on <laughs> Which I was trying really hard not to like overpower the light so you couldn't see the swirly shapes. Oh no, I, like, I mean, I can see the shapes <laughs> fine. And um, I, to, like, I think having control, edges but... is really beneficial. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about blending every edge because like sometimes these hard edges really help mm. make something pop and stand in its own. Kind of like how we see things yeah. in nature. Oh, sh um, where I've got like the, I, I also sort of put I ended up making two layers of leaves in the little folder that contained the fruits. One on top, as I had already, but then I put like one underneath as well to sort of like blend the ones underneath. But should they be? I feel like this should be sort of like a silhouetting effect because like when there's a light looking at you, it kind of bl it kind of blocks out everything behind it, doesn't it? I mean, uh, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but at this point, I would look at like lanterns and trees and see what kind of effects that mm -hmm. does. But yeah, that'd be a, a, a relevant reference. Yeah. Alright, on to CPCs. Yay. You got this girl? Shiny. Are you in voice <laughs> chat? She was, but then did she disappear? She's here. Yeah, I see Spook. Spook. I haven't got a Halloween name, name yet. Mm. That's because there's nothing scarier than trying to tame that fluff. You know, I'm, I'm sad this year. Because I remember last year we had lots of fun where we, like, changed our avatars for, like, Talk Like a Pirate Day or, like, <laughs> you know, other holidays. I think I joined in with that one. I drew, like, a parrot on my shoulder or something. <laughs> and then we had Celestia or Luna take over. Yep. Uh, uh, that was a good, good time. All right. All right, QDP. Um, any questions offhand on the, your picture? Yes, that is the cute pirate. <laughs> cute pirate case. <laughs> I mean, my, my obvious name is uh, the Eye. But I feel like I want something more clever. <laughs> You're talking the legs and arms of the crab, right? No, I'm in the wrong channel. Uh, uh, so the legs and the arm of the crab, they look... I, I think the, the back ones are actually too high up. Because if... if the the whole the I almost said the horse. Jeez. <laughs> Not a horse, LD. <laughs> like perspective says these should be down quite a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I'd just drop it down further. Boop. And I think I think the crab arms themselves, something feels off. Just because, like, with with these lines just got drawn in red, um, this arm is significant significantly closer to the eyeballs than this arm is, so it feels a bit off to me. Because I know nature loves its symmetry for most things, except for size. Because some crab claws can be like, here you get eeny weeny little T Rex hand, and then a big honking, you know, hammer claw thing. Hammer claw. Crabs are crabs are interesting things. Rock lobster. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's really the only thing that's poking to me. Yeah. There there is weirdness about the shell, if you ask me. It looks flat. And <laughs> that's exactly a CPC. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's kind of adorable, but kind of horrifying. Um, a teeny weeny little hand and then a monster. But like a Kingler in Pokemon. Don't, don't the shells actually go up? Crabs are actually pretty flat, depending on what crab you're looking at. Alright. All the, all the roundness is underneath them. Okay. Because, like, crabs look like... I, I used to do a lot of crabbing when I was little, so... Allie. Yeah? I, I can't see you fighting crabs. 
I just, <laughs> you don't fight them. You just throw a piece you, of string out with chicken I've, on it and I've reel them that. in. <laughs> it's easier oh. than fishing, so I don't know. <laughs> it's fun. You just sit at the end of the dock. I didn't and, catch you know... any, but yeah. I did it's that in Cornwall. Time. It was nice. Yeah, it's fun. Crabbing is fun. I suggest it for anybody. I drew a sort of like thing um, at the side there. Uh, but uh, I hope it, I'm just sort of trying to find some 3D perspective, but like... Yeah, that's, I, I did not select that color, you silly, silly thing. It's disobeying me. Okay. It is seriously not remembering my colors, that's weird. Punch it. Uh, but yeah, you've got, <laughs> you've got a... Uh, uh, okay, this is a really hard movement for my hand to do, oh my god. But it's, it's, it's kind of like a, a Rebel Galaxy chocolate button or whatever. Like, <laughs> what? The way, the, way kind of, the way I kind of see them there, it's like this, this sort of like raised disc shape. And then you've got the legs come out from the bottom. Um, and they've, they've obviously got to like... I, I haven't actually studied crap, so this... Take my, don't take my absolute word for it and study this yourself. But look, I actually, I, I did study spider legs for drawing driders, and it, I, I would assume it kind of works the same sort of way from having the same sort of build. Um, and they go... They've got to clear the body first and then go up and... Uh, where it's pointing doesn't do everything. They've got to sort of get that distance there to clear the body. Um, then go up, and then you know, then you have the actual bit that they're supported on. Um, so I just sort of put that there just to help because I can see the way this looks to me. Um, LD already said to lower them, but like the reason why I think is because because this overlaps quite obviously. Um, it this would basically be going through an impossible. This leg would be going through an, an impossible sort of crevice where it's like phasing through the shell but not really so it kind of makes it look like it's just all behind like the entire legs are behind it and the shell is just in front uh and it just kind of throws off the idea of it being round um so just sort of, uh, like we always say draw what's not there put the base of the leg there base leg goes up leg goes blah 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 um or leg just goes straight out or whatever kind of crab you're going for uh just sort of think about how they're placed on the bottom like they're coming out of like a sort of turret base <laughs> Crab turd. <laughs> Spiders of oh. the sea, Ali said. Well, I mean, the Alaskan king crab is so creepy. <laughs> it just is. Look at look at those arms of pinchers. And... We need just we need we need lots of uh, crabbies blowing bubbles in here, evolving into kinglers. Yeah. Like that scene in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon when they're just blowing bubbles at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking yeah. of crabs. I would like yeah. to remind everyone that there is an eggy going on where the current theme is birds. And not crabs. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> Seamless segue. Seamless. Like doing a hard right into a brick wall. <laughs> and um, I guess the only other thing I have to say, I think the core and everything is looking very, very nice. It is quite a lot of, to, of stuff to visually put into place, like in your brain. Because uh, there's a lot of different sorts of details, lots of varying line weights, lots of different types of shapes and lines. Like lots of you got curves that go straight to sort of like more wobbly things, and you got all sorts of different shapes. And your brain's like, whoa! So like, I'm assuming that you are going to color this, and when you do, it would it, you, you obviously have much more opportunity then to draw things out shape wise. But like LD said to me about the trees, you know, uh, make sure that there's you don't use any colors right next to each other that are too similar. You want to bring things apart. By using lots of different colors so don't surround anything basically because then it will just help your brain say okay this this part here is different color than this thing so they're different shapes um i don't know if you're going to put shading in it or not but that would help too obviously that would just be like a lot of difficult shading <laughs> she wants to do a big rainbow that'd be really cool i like that <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, say, I agree that uh, doing a coral reef, so that's why I chose a coral reef, that's definitely a good, like, opportunity to just put all the colours in. That'd be mm -hmm. great. I have to think, though, um, I don't know if they... When you see, like, coral reefs, there's obviously lots of, like, pinks and magentas there as well as, like, blues and greens and yellows and everything else. But, like, underwater, like, colour... As the deeper you go, the colour spectrum, like... Uh, certain frequencies of light don't make it down as deep, and red is the first to go, so I'm like... You see a lot of like sort of pink and red coral reefs, but I don't know if it's just like in certain areas where they're not so deep. Because a lot of the time when you see them, they're like really deep underwater, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like a weird thing. I don't know if they just color correct them to put reds in. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I guess it also depends on the cleanness of the water. Because you look at, like, mm -hmm. the water that has that pristine, like, crystal blue water that you can just see through. Uh, I just, I want to visit that sort of place. <laughs> yeah. Some I mean, of those. Turkey was pretty nice. <laughs> but not quite that pristine with, like, beautiful coral reefs and stuff. That would have been gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's both shallow reefs and deeper reefs. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, so the shallow ones, you can obviously think of, like, uh, like in Moana, like you mentioned earlier. <laughs> having, Shiny. Yes. Having, like, at the, bit, at the beginning, they have such beautiful colored oceans, and it's all, like, you see all the coral reefs and everything, because that's, like, close to the surface. But mm -hmm. I actually did go in a submarine when I was in when I was in uh, Tenerife, I mm -hmm. believe. Oh, no, actually, I think it was Turkey. I went in a submarine, and it was, like, there was, it was it was really cool, but like I have my 3ds, which is like bright blue, but it's got pony stickers all over it, and like all the the ones like Pinkie Pie and stuff just like went completely like gray and black because like the red was going as we were mm -hmm. deeper. It's really weird. It's really cool. It's weird. Like, but we there's also in the water. <laughs> <laughs> there's also what other benefit to deep sea reefs is that you start to get that like glowing phosphor is phosphorescence there? I don't quite remember, but yeah. Um... You start to get more glowy colors from wreaths, like you get like glowy mm. blues and pinks and stuff. Mm. But yeah, how color works and light and everything can be really fascinating, especially with water and how it bends and, and stuff like that. It's really cool. But um, did you have anything else you wanted to know, DPC? The cutest of pencil cases? About your Sir Crab? Sir Crawl Crab? Sir Crabby Crab. <laughs> I realize that the, the three D crab things I am looking at again it kinda of looks like a squash basketball. She's <laughs> <laughs> distracted looking for coral race, alright then. <laughs> you need to add more fluff to the coral, obviously. <laughs> or coral, not coral. Fluffy fish. I mean you can find some guy <laughs> named Carl and add fluff to them. You know? <laughs> oh my god. I just had an image in my head of, of keep pentacase just appro approaching guys and, and then just like sticking like fluff balls and like <laughs> patches of, of like uh, like uh, arts and crafts fluff with like PVC glue and which is like, Oi, what are you doing? And then she's just like <laughs> sticking fluff on everyone. <laughs> my quest to find Carl. And make them fluffy. <laughs> yes, that I I knew a guy called who Carl here in my uh, so that she's probably gonna be able to find some I'm sure. <laughs> All right, on to the next picture. Next Which picture. Is, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to the oil painting. Oop, yeah, I was, I, was, I was gonna ask if this was a painting or an inking thing because I couldn't quite tell. Yeah. Uh, is this base? Are they in the chat for sweet? No. Mm -hmm. This is submitted but, from our subreddit. Because I, because I was gonna, like, I, I was kind of thinking this is from the bit, the um, inspiration manifestation episode. Yeah. It kind of looks like that, doesn't it? But it's, uh, I, the one thing, I, obviously, and you probably already sort of think this yourself, but like the magic around the horn is very dull, and like usually it's like a very bright glow, um, and you obviously don't have much definition in the horn. It almost looks underwater. To, as a nice segue, it looks like it's sort of like a, a gel because you, if it's like a solid green thing, you can kind of make out the horn, but it's all kind of being bent by the way that this gel on top of it is shaped. Uh, but that's probably not what you're going for. Um, it's just that it's, I think if you used a more pastel sort of hue, uh, I mean, you can use this and then go over it. I don't know what kind of paint you're using or how applicable that is, but if you went over it with a lighter color, that'd be cool. And then, then go over it with an even lighter color, or at least between between the ridges of the horn but you, you could leave the ridges as they are maybe and that would kind of make a nice like glowing effect but uh, on top of the lighter the lighter green go over like the main sections of the horn just to sort of redefine there's a white solid object inside this um but I, as when i do glowing horns for my um art as well i like to like make the horn itself kind of got have like a soft white inside it because you know that's the center of the glow but if you, this is, looks like it's supposed to be more of like a show style thing where it is more just like a solid shape hovering around the horn but it's just that the horn would be more defined inside that you'd still be able to like see it um like it's not a completely solid like semi opaque thing it's like it's still a magic aura so as much as it looks like a solid shape because it has edges in the show 
it's still very much transparent and it's still bent around the horn. So that means that this object in the middle is only, we're seeing it through only one side of this. Uh, and whereas these edges, we're seeing two, or, well, not really two sides, we're seeing the whole like surface of it. But that gets into like transparent object spheres and all sorts of stuff. So don't worry too much about that. But like the the horn is still in the middle, basically, so it's it's kind of closer to us than the the whole back of the aura is. If that makes any sense, um, I'll draw a little doodle at the side. Uh, do do do. It's going to be terrible. But here's a horn. Dang it, CPC. In the meantime, other people can talk about stuff that isn't so nonsensical. So, um, I do have a question for this artist, and hopefully they are listening to this and can respond. Um. Why did you choose oil over something like water or acrylic for starting out? Uh, the the question be or the the reason I'm asking is because oil is silly expensive. Like holy cow, even for basic stuff, it's just fact or degrees of more expensive than the acrylic versions. Acrylic, for the most part, you can get quite a similar feeling than oil, especially when you're going to the cheaper oils, because they use and they don't uh, have the 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 not drying power of that you normally get from oil. They they tend to become tacky and don't mix as well, so it very much feels like an acrylic. I don't know. It's just mm -hmm. been my observations from the, cheap oils. There, I drew a representation of the horn inside a magic cone. Uh, obviously, it would be actually it'd be wobbling and bendy, uh, but that's just kind of showing how it works in a 3d perspective but it's that's probably like a very simple thing anyway it just basically my representation it sorry my, my recommendation is just to to go over the magic with the lighter color if you can uh and to go over the horn with the lighter color on top of that to to define that on the inside mm -hmm. um that's about all i have that this as for like the actual like shape and anatomy i think everything's really nice although i would say the leg here needs to be completed uh where's my um, that's not a nice color. Yeah, the, the the leg here, it kind of like, I'm not quite sure where it's going. Um, oh, there we go. That that kind of works. Uh, you got to just sort of think about like where the body is flowing. Uh, if the neck's coming down here, then it's likely going out here, and then creating the back of her there, or maybe it's sort of a bit more strongly defined. Uh, it, it's up to you, sort of like where the pose is. I don't know how much under sketching you did on this because obviously you've erased it if you did any because it's a painting. Um, but you, you you just sort of work out like the body like okay she's leaning forward here, or you or you do it so she's like leaning this way. But I don't think you have because the chest. Um, this this leg here. Oh, where, where have I gone? Oh, I'm over there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Abby. I You're was, fine. My, my my cursor was drawn to your little poem. Um, <laughs> I think the leg here kind of breaks the anatomy a bit because the chest comes in uh, and this leg is very much cutting through the chest, if that makes sense. So it almost makes it look like the leg is flat here and then slowly, slowly rounds out as it goes up, which isn't a very good sort of shape. Um, obviously, the legs aren't flat at the top. So you've actually got a shoulder which goes through here. Again, I'm using my two colors to show sort of like the underside. Uh, then the leg is going to come up. I, I, I'm assuming that the leg is supposed to be coming forward towards the camera. It definitely looks like it to me. Otherwise, it's too short. But I, that doesn't seem like an error you've made. I think this is coming forward. I mean, you've got the overlap here in the main as well. It very much shows like, hey, yes, this leg is here. Um, but you just got to sort of think about where it's starting from, um, really. Because... Uh, I think, yeah, if you raise it up this way a little bit, then that kind of makes it have a better effect. You could also try and curve it a bit more to show that it is indeed trying to arc around the body and not just go straight through it. It just looks like it's coming out at too sharp of an angle, basically. Um, it's hard for me to see like, where the shoulder is coming from. It might be the shading as well, because this shading actually does kind of imply that it's like a flat object. Whereas if you bend it around a bit more, that kind of implies it's round. So I don't know. That that's that's my little two cents. 
I think, um, I do think on top of that, that it's a bit short. Like, this is a very Philly leg. Like, I could see I, Apple I Bloom so or well. Sweetie Belle lifting their leg up and only getting to as long as their face. But the problem is we can compare to their face. So if you look against, like, a full-grown pony's face, their hooves are obviously much longer than the size of their head. So I think that that is the big... I, I don't even know so, if yeah. making it bigger. I would consider adding more joints to where the leg would be, kind of like the up-down. Yeah, let's have a try. I'm going to join you in rubbing this out. And, <laughs> and you, can, you can just screenshot what I drew before if you need that as reference. Mm -hmm. Yay, YouTube videos and pausing. Yay. Well, that's, that's just my two cents. Because um, even with foreshortening, everything is so close I feel like if you are going for that, you almost would need a different angle where the hoof would be favored to be the biggest object. But right now, it's the farthest objects from the viewer. So we have this very hard time believing its direction, especially <laughs> when it's... Oh, look, she has a drill hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's that a new superpower. An... <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> but yeah, I do believe the leg does need to be much longer, even if it is coming uh, when you're using the foreshortening and everything. Um, it's hard to sort of define. I don't want to go over these drawings. I'm just going to go on. Oh, you go ahead. Uh, go over the drawings. <laughs> they can always pause and go back. Uh, but yeah, that's um, it's it's hard to put a bend in because I think the point is should basically be like throwing the hoof into the air, but uh, maybe sort of think about the angle and it going like there again. Every time I do that, it joins up to this horn and looks like a magic drill drill hand. Um, but you, you get my point, just sort of like, oh, the hoof is going up this way, and yeah, raising it into the air. There we go, that's cool. Woohoo. Um, but it just you don't want it to look too straight. You've got to sort of think about the, the curve and bend that hooves have. That was a really good line, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, the one... I'm not really... drawing an elbow leg there. That's not just connected to, to her elbow, and just she's growing a second leg. That was <laughs> <laughs> meant to be like a random thing on its own. Uh, I've lost it now. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. The one really nice thing about Rarity is that she's always over the top and extending her limbs. So even to find a reference, uh, here, I have one right here. I'll post it in both chats. Boom. There's so many, so many references of her just like throwing her arm in the air. It's so easy for you to yeah. just get that reference, get that, oh, that's a good uh, reference. you know. Yes. And you can see it's much longer there. Can we can we shove that in? I, yeah. I, can... I did both chats. Let oh, just, uh, let me just drag into, into that thing screen. over the screen. Just, uh... And there's so many. That's just the first I found on Derpy Burrow of her extending her hand. There's different yeah. angles she's done it at. Too, so I hope people don't get spoiled. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know. I, I, just I think it's a new one. Trying to quickly grab something. Yeah. No, I, I Spoiler. Can, I can. There's ponies <laughs> in the pony show. Hey, Art <laughs> Hobbit. Spoiler. Rare chaps. Best ship. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, just definitely think about the length of the legs. You, again, it's sort of working out the size of the character in general. I know you're just drawing a headshot here, but you've got to think about the fact that they're like, put it into kind of like a real perspective and think this character is sitting, sitting in front of a camera or whatever, or just in front of where we're viewing. Essentially, just imagine our, our viewpoints in the show or whatever as a camera. Uh, she's sitting in front of it her legs have already got i mean she's obviously leaning back here because the the bottom leg the, the other leg here is, is clearly like doing this and, and it's not going down to the ground unless she's leaning on the table um whereas if she was you'd sort of do it more like this uh but that i mean that's fine uh but it's just a case of like thinking about how she's sitting and where she's posing think about that uh, where i drew her body anyway she's going to be like here um and think about the center of gravity and everything and you know where this leg would be most importantly of all where this leg would be if it was down here with the other leg if she had both legs on the floor how long would they be to make sense basically so draw what's not there and think about what's not there mm -hmm. even if he means you have to do little a little thumbnail off to the side so you go off to the side and you're like oops i just flipped the cameras upside down it's not no! good. <laughs> um you, you go off to the side and you're like, hey, so the pony, hit, the body is like this, uh, da, 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 uh, and then hoof, and hoof. I'm going to do that in a different color because it would make more sense. There's the other hoof. And then you're like, okay, so like the same thing next to it, uh, body, whatever, or you just do like the little jelly bean 
jelly bean body um, and really bad at that, evidently. And you're like, huff, huff, and sort of try to make sense of it, you know, just do little thumbnails. Um, I don't know, that's that's just my sort of idea anyway. Mm -hmm. it, I'm just it, throwing it, in the... It helps you to define it. So does this make sense being this length? <laughs> I'm just going to kick throw in another reference I found with foreshortened hooves because it's oh, coming uh, towards the camera. As you notice, Key Pencil Case has fluffed both the fruits on my picture and like the archways in the foreground and background. <laughs> they're kind of fluffy anyway because they're covered in trees, or at least on one side. But... <laughs> that picture, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grabbing them as I see but, um, them. I really don't want to eat a fluffy fruit. Though key pencil case, I wonder why they haven't developed that as a defense have you, mechanism. Have you never had a peach before. or a kiwi? I mean, a small layer of fuzz, sure, but like literally just like fluffed out like crazy. I mean, like herbivores don't eat other animals, so they would be like, "Oh, I don't want to eat this." <laughs> <laughs> a triple. Anyway, uh, on to the next picture. On to the next picture. Danger zone. All right, so this picture is submitted by a person in my email. Uh, email. Uh, it is by Steam Flash. Uh, as you know, they do the progression of their images as they go, and this is the last level of progression. So they're looking for feedback on shading and background perspective. Um, yeah, and they'd be interested in any other points. So, this is their picture. It looks like they've started some shading, but their shading is very minimal and seems to have more than one light source hanging around. Uh, mm -hmm. Because their light source is coming from behind, but then we have their side all lit up. Uh, that, that doesn't make sense unless you have more than one light source or one heck of a reflected light source hanging around. My solution would be move that light source uh, if you place it on this side of the head, whoosh, like this, and point it down over here, ramp, ramp, going like that, that direction makes a lot more sense for your light source. We do some cleanup of the ear and a little around the hairs, and then your body light source is fine. Mm -hmm. um, your your pony looks pretty okay. Their their flank is a little thin. A little wider on these hips. Uh, the wing placement, good. I see two sets of wings, that's good. Four legs, they all appear to be on the correct orient. Yeah, the correct orientation to the plane, like to the, the, the background and foreground you've set. Yeah. Uh, the tails behind the pony. Plus plus. Yeah, so so just re-examine re your lighting. Um, if you want to go from the direction you originally stated, then you're just going to have to do a lot of work on making sure only that light is cast. So take, basically invert the lighting you have right now on the front, but on the legs, you're going to leave it the same and just thin it out over here. Yeah, it's going to take a bit more work of re-examining. It looks like you might have forgot your, where your light source was coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, lighting is a pain in the butt to get used to how to do it and how to properly project lights and shadows on a subject. My suggestion is reduce them down to simple shapes, simple 3D shapes, and shade those simple 3D shapes. Because when you're trying to think of it, oh, it's a pony arm, they do all these weird flexes. Well, I mean, sure, it's an arm, but it's also just a bunch of cylinders slapped together with a little duct tape bubble gum and rainbows. <laughs> I like that description. So, yeah, you're doing a good job. I see no issues with perspective. Everything looks fine there. Mm -hmm. uh, these pillars are really thin. I mean, they, they look like they're supposed to be those great big Greek pillars. They look just small in comparison to the horse. Mm hmm Even with um, this pillar up front, it still feels so small because you have... It's... To me, um, visually, when I look at it, they feel almost the same width as the ones in the background. So there's none of that comparison going on that you normally get. Sure, they feel taller, 
but I have nothing comparison to compare the width of it when it's this close to us. So maybe even making these pillars giant to make these guys feel like they're farther in the background and maybe to have this as our informant of the true size, this like giant pillar in this area. Cause that would really give those pillars weight because it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, here, here's the reference for what a pillar looks like. Now all these other pillars behind the pony are that exact same size, but they're so far, you know, it, it makes it more majestic that way. And it really, cause right now the pony feels like it's the most giant thing I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Because Maybe we have, we don't pony, have that push. Maybe they that's... just really liked NC Mare's giant ponies and went, that's what I want to be doing today. He, is totally valid but if not there's ways to push the sizes on things yeah and um the other little tip um like you said like what you have is really good but there's ways you can push it to make it better so something i like to utilize is overlapping lines um like in this tail back here this little area instead of because right now it's a very flat shape it's like yeah you got that curve and it connects so it feels very flat but something that you can make it pop and feel more 3D is just this little this little overarching line right here. Just just this little bit, this littlest bit pointing out. That gives the feel now that it has like this whole shape is, you know, behind there. It's almost like if I were to draw a box where the tail is and like kind of make it 3D, it's almost like we'd have it sitting like this. So we have this full shape where uh, I'll, I'll take purple. Purple is the back of the tail. And then white is the side. So it's like, it's got that depth to it. Just little lines like that can really push the 3D shapes you have. Same with um, the ear here. I have a little problem with because it can, the hair connects directly to the ear. That's kind of like a tangent going on. We need something to break that up because the lines are two different lines, two, two different things connecting. It'll really help the form, the shape, and just the idea that it's the hair is overlapping onto the face. So, like again, just like a little line to break it up, and that'll make a world of difference, just with how things feel. So that's that's like something to really push it further to make your art even better. All right, I got nothing else. Fluffy's run off towards his fluffy kingdom. So we're going to move on to the next one. And our last one. I can't wait to... Fl- oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Cute pencil case is going to break down unless she can fluff it soon. <laughs> Alright. So the final one we have submitted today. Uh, sorry, what don't you get? Horse, horse? There's three chats I got a lot of things this is by uh canvas something another i gotta stop stepping out of these messages spellbound canvas there we go what is all this fluff i've come back to right <laughs> she's excited love this <laughs> yeah actually i think she's just gone like full here's johnny kind of thing <laughs> just axe right through the door with the fluffy axe this looks very cute <laughs> So this is by Spellbound Canvas. Uh, and Have it's we had this late. stuff before? Th- we've done their stuff before. Yeah, because I recognize the sort of theme of the three CMC next to each other in a line. Yeah, they, they love pajama ponies. <laughs> it's like we seem to see these three like together in this like particular order we've seen before as well. We've actually critiqued this exact pose. Oh, have we? This person has done. Yeah, they've done that pose six or seven times if you go through the gallery. At least... One thing I will notice straight off the bat regarding that exact thing is they have, li- it looks like they have listened in the fact that they, there's no symmetry between the bodies. Like they, you can see these uh, hooves are in different places. Mm-hmm. Apple Room looks like she's a little bit further forward. Scootaloo's in a completely different pose. I like that they've done that because that's actually something I said last time we did one of their pictures, I think, mm-hmm. was that they were like too similar. So that's great. Definitely notable improvement on this. We got shading thrown on this time. Uh, I love the little the bottoms of Sweetie Belle's hooves. They look really nice. <laughs> they are definitely improving, um, mm-hmm. but we can push the shading further because it looks like you just quickly threw on some shading but didn't fully go through the motions with it. Because we're mm-hmm. missing you. Like, let's look at Scootaloo real quick. 
we have a light source coming from what appears to be ooh, what appears to be the top. <laughs> what the heck? I'm minus two in that other day, it's annoying. It it doesn't want to let go at this point. No, <laughs> it it just really loves that spot. Yeah, it's like no, I'm here. Try undoing again, or like I don't know, or clicking next to that spot. I use the erase tool. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Draw a pile, <I>, everybody. <laughs> so we have a light source coming from the top right now that appears to only affect Scootaloo. What am I drawing? Actually, I think I don't know where it's coming from because we got we got lighting on the back of the main two. I'm gonna assume the top. Um, I think it's the window. I, I'm. It's it's very hard to tell. I'm gonna assume the window just because. All right, then. I think this is the safer answer. We aren't sure where your light source is coming from because it's inconsistent among the entire picture. So, mm -hmm. if you were to go back, well, it's six minutes, we went on about uh, getting a consistent light source. But basically, draw on your light source. In this case, let's say, let's just say it's the window. We're going to, oh, come on. <laughs> there it goes. There's something weird going on with this program today. There's it's our drawn in light always... source. Light is coming from this direction. It is all streaming in from the window. If you did that, then uh, if I just switch colors, uh, the basically what you need, what happens then is the lights are going to be around the edge. That's a horrible color for shading, but whatever. Um, so you're just going to have like a colored edge, and the objects on the inside are going to be like uh, the shading is kind of going to be around the middle. I don't know. That's how I do it anyway. Um, I think that would work for this because you don't want to. I, I don't think you really need to go full, full on like uh, exploring light and shadow on three uh, D painting and stuff because obviously this is a very cartoony thing. Um, having like that edge of light and everything else being like behind them because like the light's coming from behind in this case. So like mm -hmm. you've got to think about like where it's casting. Um, I'm trying to like pick good colors for this, but. Is there a paint bucket tool there? It's... There's a That's not what I expected selector. to happen. Uh, I think it's like shift. Control? Yes. Right control. You can use a color okay. picker. Oh, no. A paint bucket, I meant. Oh. No. But, yeah, it, it, there's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> Still, this is too dark. If I say it's too light, then it's too dark. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that. Th at least with this, you can kind of see like where the where I'm sort of coming from with it. And the Scootaloo, I've done a little bit like it's coming from above. Um, so I'll continue doing that just to sort of show. Mm -hmm. So what we're getting at here is your picture's good. Your your characters they look they look like the CMC when they're nice and young and the most adorable things ever. But if you've started with the shading, we might as well carry it through to the rest of the picture. Mm -hmm. um, for a penny and for a pound. Exactly. Also, your background looks great, man. The wood texture is minimal enough. It's not jarring. I might want to say lower the opacity on the inner lines. So all these... Oh, come on! <laughs> these lines in here. These guys. Um, the only reason I say that is because they shouldn't be as jarring as the shadow that would be forming between the gaps. So I would just lower the opacity on those lines but if it's too late it's too late nothing you can do about it too late unless you want to take a brush of that color like this and lower its opacity way down and just one big pass of hard fun times and you can just reduce it like that I'm getting ready to do it. Less <laughs> jarring. You can actually, ooh, you can abuse this across some of your gaps too, because not all gaps are going to be the same. Anyway, dealer's choice. Uh, Sundaw. Yeah, if you want to submit your art, feel free. Mm -hmm. That's what it's got scrolling across the top of it. Just throw it at our faces. It's the only way we'll know. Um, my other suggestion for the flooring, the wood flooring, um, I would maybe try to get some perspective on that. 
I know there's usually easy, you know, transform tools. All you really need to do is pinch the, uh, I guess I would say, top. No, you'd make the top wider. Uh, so, like, if you had a box, I'm just going to go off to the side a little bit. Hopefully, st yeah, I think I'm still in the case. So, this is what your, let's say, your, you know, your floor looks like top down. Now, what you want to do is take that box and make it, oh, let me, I'll just go under it. You take that box and you turn it into a trapezoid. Boom. And already your floor will feel like it's them sitting on it instead of a floor just going straight down. Because it looks like a top-down view instead of, you know, there's a, there's a you know, like a, uh, you know. Yeah, okay, I'll still be in. You got your wall. And there's the floor's attachment and then the floor. And this will all be coming off the screen. So, like, in the end it will cut off. Let me just grab a different color in red like here and here but you'll still have the extensions of the floor that'll look nicer look it's sun it's spellbound they're here oh hello spellbound uh i how much of that did you manage to catch spellbound second okay um i'm still gonna link you the video on reddit so you can see the first half but mm -hmm. basically we're just talking about shading and lighting direction uh make it make sure it's all coming from the same direction and same source mm -hmm. source or sources um and I've, right. I've i've done like a top down shading on Skooloo and i've done a, a back shading on Bloom just so you get some like both perspectives there is there any questions you have for us are there, not is there. English. <laughs> hey, Durden. Durden. Hello. <laughs> Keep pencil cases still just going crazy over there. Keep pencil cases is like <laughs> advice is to add fluff. The fluff Lots of <laughs> the fluff axe is going to be coming in. Also, I wanted to ask while we're waiting, Horse Horse, if you have a question, f please feel free to speak up. We're happy to explain if anyone's lost or confused or anything. You don't need to submit art. You can just ask questions. That's totally okay, too. All right, we're going to move on to our next picture and uh, let CPC, you know, do her thing. Oh, <laughs> I have... I have... I have one last thing to add to this picture. Be careful about the stamps you're using for the decor or, you know, the pattern on their pajamas. It's because cute, the Sweetie but... Belle one got a little messy and it's kind of going all over the place and we lose the idea mm. that it's a pattern. It's going um, over the lines a little bit, which kind of messes up somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they all, all of them are doing going, that, yeah. But uh, especially Sweetie Bells, it seems mm -hmm. like the pattern kind of went haywire. Mm -hmm. And the thing I mean, about fabric is that it's it's all pretty patterned so yeah, like if you're gonna, gonna do a pattern a long, you're gonna have a long a big square that you cut shapes out of so it's mm -hmm. all gonna be very uh tessellating i mean ideally you want the shapes to bend around the edge around the curve of the body but i understand that that is quite difficult to do especially when it's something like this and i wouldn't ask you to draw each and every one of these oh no, no. in but what you can do especially in like apple bloom's case i think she's got big objects you can like 
manually go in and just like twist and bend some of those apples just like rub a bit of an edge draw another bit in to replace it and just like curve some of it so it looks like it's bending around the side mm -hmm. it would be a small effect but it's definitely something to mess around with because that will sort of be some good exploration and uh experience in like just practicing with 3d shapes how they how patterns bend around stuff even if it doesn't look absolutely stellar you know the point of this is growing and learning exactly all right, what are we up to next? Sun does rarity. Ooh, rarity gets points in my book. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got two rarities this stream, so that's uh, <laughs> double rah rah. So, Sun you can hear us, right? All right, do you have any questions offhand? big anatomy mistakes uh that hourglass shape is ouch uh i do think there is something i want to say about the anatomy actually let me just think of a good color that will show up on this um and not be on the multiply layer uh the ch the way that the torso comes out from under the arm you've got that great but then it would continue on down here rather than and so the breasts would actually come be on like a, a a kind of a section of the chest oops and not hopefully not asymmetrical in size but uh, rather than the chest coming out from under the breast because that's kind of, kind of a common misconception um they're not going to just stick out i mean you can uh, even like have them completely inside the chest altogether but often with third quarter the one on the outside is going to go around the outside but um don't be afraid to add some weight there to the body but just think about like how it bends in that you've got a rib cage in there containing organs and lungs and everything, <laughs> um, and <laughs> uh, obviously as well, look up reference of people because yeah, another common misconception which you've avoided is that the the chest leads directly into the arm. No, you've got the arm coming out on top of it, and that's that's great. So you're making good progress there, but just you, um, you want to be thinking about uh, how it goes from there, basically. And I think no, I might be wrong, but I do remember the sort of shoulder line sort of linking up to this for some reason where the arm bends in, but I might be wrong about that. Um I mean, you've got you've got a good start, but like I'd say the 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 torso shouldn't be coming from directly connecting to the breasts. Uh, that's my thing. I would skinny down the shoulders because those are those are some dang defined shoulders and I've yet to see anyone who has that sharp of a shoulder. But there's weird people out there, so who knows? Um, as far as <laughs> color for uh, for outfits, watch Verity in the show. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's it comes down to color theory. Color theory mm -hmm. is a magical, very very long thing to study. I can't spit out color theory to you here. There's it's just not enough time, and I don't have enough knowledge in it. My suggestion, head over to your local library or your old Googler, and you're going to Google color theory. There's some things from Skira. I think that's their YouTube series, their name. Skira. I, Skira. I know who you're talking about, but I wouldn't trust myself to say it right. <laughs> yeah, they, they, do, they do a wonderful, like, six-part, 30-minute each part color theory thing. <laughs> wonderful detail through it. Um, there's, there's oodles upon oodles upon mountains of color theory books from your local library. Uh, you can probably find PDFs on a good chunk of them for free online. Public I think results. we have tags dedicated to color theory and color too. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think if we just go color theory, oh, I spelled color wrong. I spelled it the Canadian way. Is that the same as the British way? Yes. Woohoo. Then don't say wrong. <laughs> you you forget everyone who made the bots are American. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to put it the wrong way to make it work. I, I, I can't make <laughs> the bot thing. <laughs> yeah, you get it's a question mark. And like um is and also if you're really curious specifically for clothing, honestly, find a fashion blogger 
you know, there's all these sorts of other things you pay attention to because there's like eye color, hair color, skin color, plus, you know, having a color palette that can go well with an outfit and like there's you know not being too busy unless you're doing like fantasy mystical horse girls obviously their costuming is so different because they live in a world where color is everything mm-hmm. you know I, I actually quite have grown a fondness for outfit design myself I've drawn some poems with different dresses and stuff with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love, I really do admire mm. costume designers mm. and like... Clothes, I think, are very hard to draw. And it's a very daunting thing, you know, because it's like fashion is such a big subject. That it's like, oh, it is. how do I learn how to draw clothes? There's no way I can do this. But I mean, no, just have a, have a look online. Look at like clothes, anime, fantasy, cartoon, whatever. You look at what they have in the show but probably not exactly what they have in some of the EQG things, but use them as like a kind of a learning tool anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some of them some of them are really beautiful, but some of them get kind of silly. Um, yes, at some point it's like um, there's realistic fashion and then there's costuming. The, the, there's, the, you know, the difference yeah. between a drag queen and someone trying to dress up for a gala, like mm-hmm. a like a yes. human gala, not the pony gala. The, uh, the, the clothes, that the, the, some of the EQG dresses I know I love are like the clothes at the end of... Um, uh, Camp Everfree when they're in the, having the party in the cave. Those are some really nice dresses. They're fun. They're very themed. A lot mm. of the stuff that Pony does is very themed. They pick a theme and they go for it. It's mm-hmm. bold. It's never something you know subdued when they make a outfit, unless it's like, oh yeah, here's their uniform, you know, mm-hmm. or mm. unless it's, it's like. It, yeah. And it's it's also I mean there there are it's as with drawing anything else there are little things you can pick up there are little techniques that you pick up sort of like tools in your toolbox like uh, oh I'm, I can study frills and then oh I'm really good at frills now you know and that's like something you can pull out and add to things and you're probably going to end up using it too much until you learn other tools but it's again just a case of looking at stuff uh, looking at references and then breaking them down stealing little bits of them at a time and saying okay I'm going to try this now. Mm-hmm. It's it's fun. Just have fun with it. You know, do what you like to see. Cause, what's appealing mm, to your cause, eye? Because I say as well, like when I when I'm doing a, a outfit design, again, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's the same thing with poses. I think I said one time before, uh, in one of these streams, like you Google poses and you get like you have those on hand because they're always really interesting and i always really want to draw from them when i don't have time to do so but then when i go to do poses it's like oh what do i do so i think the same thing applies for like clothes get references mm-hmm. and just have a folder so if you have to design a clothes uh except clothes on a character pull up your folder and just look through all the pictures for fun and just be like oh yeah i, I love this i've been wanting to try out this little bit here of this this outfit mm-hmm. and then boom you can like try work it in i mean people laugh at me sometimes when i suggest this but any type of design, make yourself a collage. Collage, 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 collage. It is your best friend. Collages help you with color palette, style, looks, you know, feelings, emotions. Mm. Like, I mean, a lot of it has that, like, mood board mm. essence to it. You got to I mean, figure out what you want. We, we had to do that in my, my college uh, digital art courses where we just, like, collaged a bunch of stuff. Like, in, uh, pages of our sketchbook, and we just stuck all those pictures in. And I didn't really get it at the time. I was like, okay, I've just got to put pictures in whatever task done. Uh, but it's like, now I kind of, like Ali said, you, you look at it and you've got all this inspiration. My whole room is a collage. People who have seen a picture of it or seen my webcam know this. Mm-hmm. It's essentially finding references, but sometimes these references are for feelings you want the outfit to have. Like, mm-hmm. you could have, you know, a plaid skirt next to a starry like, night sky. Like, look, like, at, look at how Rarity designs dresses in the show. They, they So many times she's like, oh, the way these flowers look or the way this, like, spoke to me with, like, objects or things, she'll just turn those into, into dresses. Like, that's, we, we have so many episodes where she does that, and this is Rarity you're drawing. So I think that's very much something that you could apply here. So many, so many options. Art, art, like, all this can be applied to any kind of design or art, not just fashion. So, like, yes, that's why I said for, it, it's the same yeah. poses as well. Like, it yeah, can yeah, be yeah. To anything. Exactly. It's mm. like so much, so much, so much yeah. art. Mm. So big. On like a different thing. The only uh, a small nitpick because I think the way you've drawn the body is very nice. So particularly with the hand, we all know how hard those are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with the uh, uh, the only thing I can sort of think is like the fact that she's like she's got skin and not fur, quite obviously. Um, so it's like she's human, but she's still got the pony ear. 
So that kind of like, it kind of throws me off a little bit. So I'm like, it's a fleshy ear and it's kind of uh. ugh. <laughs> but if that's what you wanted to do, then then cool. But uh, it's sort of like finding that some things can sort of create kind of like an awkward effect. Uh, so mm -hmm. so there we go. Keep Pence Casey's fixing it with the fluff. Um, <laughs> But again, in that case, it's like she has a furry ear coming. I was going to say, but then she has like a furry ear coming out of her skin body. So it's like, it's finding that balance of like, like you see like anthro, sometimes they have hooves, sometimes they have hands. It's about like mix and matching sort of like a degree of different transformation between pony to human and like what aspects you want to keep and what aspects should be moved first and you know what not. Like if she had the muzzle as well and she still had skin, it would just be like, whoa, that's weird. But I mean, it's also like creativity, but like it's just like trying to sort of look at what you want. I mean, then again, like I guess the EQG characters have like the coloured skin, but they still get like the ears when they do they, mm -hmm. they pon pony up or whatever. But they're very much like something they do uh, strategically is that the ear is placed on it more like a headband than it would be attached to the head. Mm -hmm. So like that's something super helpful. Because then it sort of helps to define it away from the body, and mm -hmm. they, they got a horse here. I mean, we do like petting zoo anthers all the time. We're like, oh, this person has cat ears, but like, you wouldn't really have it on like a person without hair. They typically sort of like blend it in, so you don't really have to think about it. So that actually does look kind of nice of what CTC has done here. But that's just my opinion, anyway. Um, it's up to you. Something I would suggest if if you do want to keep it flesh tone, I do agree. It feels a bit odd to have a flesh tone ear. Um, when she's so human, um, but you can look at animals that have less fur, you know, like a, like a sphinx cat, see how delicate those ears are, how like thin they are instead of having like the big bulky pony ears we normally see, just really look and see how thin they are and kind of like, you know, scale it, scale it back a bit, make it, you know, take away that mm. fur and that Yeah, like, like I said, volume. so mi mix between different... Uh find the sort of scale that you want the the transformation to be the the point that they should be at mm -hmm. it's all, all right. good to experiment so yeah definitely it's, it's 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 all good you know it's good that you've done this and it's it'd be good to try other things too we ready to move on to our next one yep if there aren't any questions mm -hmm. i'm good to go let's see dun, 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 dun. So, the Aggie we got going on. There's yeah, the a bird watcher Aggie. that sees nothing. What's going on, guys? Where's it's our birds? It's so lonely in the Aggie. I, <laughs> I usually wait till after because then I've got like to, to draw between <laughs> this and the Aggie. Sunda. <laughs> Plus, I'm eating noodles right now, so it's kind of hard to do all three things. Draw, draw a bird in the Aggie for us. I we believe in you. We just critiqued your eye. It's only fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> Horse horse. I agree. Like um horse horse oh, okay. says, uh no horns though, so random. In the show they do the exact same thing. Uh they have the all the Pegasi get their wings, but all the unicorns and of course dirt horses only get ears. Hmm. I mean I guess strange. I guess it's giving so the girls horns would be odd, so no one uh Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can see why struck it. it. Would, I can see why it would be like, oh then it's like they expect to use magic, but I, I don't know, I, I would have liked to see them have horns. I think a person with, like, a unicorn horn is cute. It's more, uh, wings are more stylish. Horns aren't exactly stylish for the little girl demographic, and that <laughs> is what the show is for in the end. All right, the last picture is down at the bottom, and it's submitted by Jordan. Jordan. Cutie patootie. Jordan. Jordan. Speaking of wings, we got a pegahorse. That only has one wing. That is my first critique. I see one wing popping up. Where's my other wing? A ponies and only line. one leg. Yeah, just with... favorite pose with this one. Just get the second leg out under there, mm -hmm. like that. Something like that. Under there. Mm. Don't don't mind. Well, since the since the lane could also sort of have it coming out at a, a different angle as well. Mm -hmm. That's way too long, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, hey, it's like they. Like it's 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 common to when you're laying down to like stick your legs at random directions. I mean, I know I do all the time when I sleep to sort of play around with how you think would the pose would be natural. But I only say that because it kind of looks like the thighs, the the, the backs sort of half of them is twisted that way anyway. We're also missing an ear. Your ears are very tall. If we're gonna match the ear height. We need that second ear. 
Um, yeah, your lines look good. Your your coarse mouth shape looks fine. Maybe make the jaw a little wider. Yeah, I can do a little wider jaw. Uh, um, the heterochromatia, chromatic, chromatic, heterochromia. Thank you. In the eyes is cool. Works. It'd be cool if that carried through to his hair. <laughs> that would be interesting. I like to have the two hair colors as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The tail looks fine. I think I would make it droop down a bit more. Like droop down, and then if you're going to roll up, give it overlap to make it roll up. Mm. You've got not lots... I see lots of nice, like... Uh, where the top of the, the mane is over the top of the head, I see lots of uh, nice sort of like flowing and overlap, so you've clearly like, practiced a bit with that. Uh, just carry it through to the, the mane at the side and to with the tail as well. Oh, what concerns him is the eyes. Um, so, your eyes are very pointy and rectangular. I thought you are just going for style, hashtag style, you know, whatever points <laughs> you want there. Um, if you're going for the MLP style eyes, they're ovals. And then you just close them. And I should probably use a smaller brush because that's really just taking over the face. So, oval. And all this is going to do is remove that sharp point you have down at the bottom. It's going to round that out. Um, yeah, your eyes, the general width of your eyes is still fine. I'd say the height's fine too, as if we assume that it's half-lidded like it is. What type of expression are you going for there? Because right now it's like, a squint. Oh, well then, the the expression you're giving off your horse is fine. Got any further questions for us? The only thing I would add, uh, the be careful of the arm length. You got some real, real long hooves going on there. And also I would bring up where your hooves start, because right now it seems like your shoulder is starting here when it actually be way up here, closer to the connection of the spine. So shading. Your, your shading is very, very, very minimal. Push it further. You have a lot of horse to work with and it's not flat. So don't be afraid of giving different layers of shading. Mm -hmm. So your wings, your wings are not casting any shadow right now, which is bizarre. Um, the side of the face, not casting a shadow, despite the fact that we have the side of the muzzle casting shadow and the side of the mane. Um, your, your arms aren't casting a shadow. Except for the top is casting the smallest shadow. I would just push that cell shading more. Follow along every part, make it into 3D in your mind, and work a shadow around it. Half You're going to have a highlight and a shadow to every bit of light. Will the highlight and shadow always show up? No. But you know it's supposed to be somewhere there. There's going to be a dark half and a bright half. Just follow it along. Easier said than done, and I know that, but the best way to do it is just do it. Overdo yeah. it, and then you can pull back from overdoing. Exactly. Mm, exaggerating is always an important thing. You gotta know how to go too far before you learn what you can do. It's like if you only ever walk to the end of the block, you'll never know it's three blocks down. There's there's a band called Oh, that's three doors down. My bad. <laughs> Isn't that bad? Yeah. 
The picture's pretty good. Keep no, doing yeah. it. It's cutie cutie. Keep drawing. Keep pushing it further. You have a horse floating in the abyss right now. Maybe give it something to float on, even if it's just a rug. A cloud. Fluffy cloud. It's a bird horse. Fluffy clouds are easy to draw on them. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Fluff, 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 fluff. Don't fluff. say fluff. They'll summon cute pencil case. <laughs> uh, I feel like I want to rethink this picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wings at particular angles. Yeah. Alright, anyone else have any art for us? If not, we're going to call it a week today and see you guys next week. Oh, a question. Yeah. Um, how do you draw good fluff? All right. <laughs> just loose. just Keep it loose. give the floor a cute pencil case. As a fluff ambassador myself, I would just say keep it loose. Like, uh, I'm, I'm going to come on the canvas again. I'm going to move over to my tablet screen. Are we still around this pone? This laying down pone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm okay. going to... Um, oh, I drew on foreground. Uh, I mean, so... Laying down sort of defining, defining lines first helps. Uh, so I'm sort of like, oh, there's some going this way, and then it's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join the, join, go over this, and I have sort of a, a guideline. Um, like when you sort of like, uh, uh. Uh, like this way, uh, it goes up here. No, like you, you want to just be loose and feathery. You can. Oh, that was a terrible board. You, you can, you can refine it later. You're gonna have parts coming out of other parts anyway. So just like, you know, whatever, fluffing, fluffing everything, and having like little extra details. Like, okay, here's a block of fluff, and then like there's a little extra bit there. There's a little bit here, you know, and, and that sort of tricks your mind into putting fluff everywhere. Because you're seeing little bits here and little bits there. Where, where is Kipen's case in all this? I expected her to be like helping me here and leaping in. I guess I'll I'll cover for her until she gets back. Um, little bits like oh the elbows will have some sticking out because there's a lot of stuff collecting there. Stuff like oh the hooves tend to uh, I've drawn all over this. Um, <laughs> what have I done? Uh, stuff like the the hooves ha will have like a lot of fluff. So uh, there we go. And keep it uneven. Keep it inconsistent, uneven, going in different directions. You don't want any consistency with it. Like, not in the sense of, like, where the direction is going. So you want to mix it up with short bits and long bits and mix it up with different directions. See, Ali Claw is helping there. So, <laughs> at, so doing this, I'm going to sort of show difference. Um, So uh, the difference between those two, the first one is obviously all one line. It, there's no overlap. It's just a jagged shape. The second one, I've mixed up the direction, I've mixed up the size, and I've done overlap. So just those three things, I've already uh, have already sort of added detail there. So I'm like, oh, there's a basic shape. Let's see if we can make this more interesting. Oh, that's too much. Oh, it really it snowballs on you. Okay. So I'm gonna break up this shape into two shapes. I'm going to add a little bit extra here before I go into that shape. I'm going to change the direction. I'm going to do that again. Okay. Add an extra bit there. Oh, I'm going to add an extra layer of fluff. There we go. Oh, that is a cute pony, Ali Claw. How to fluff. <laughs> they fluff. They train hard to fluff. Yeah. I, if if there's one thing I that I, I can hope you take... Retain for myself and keep pencil case is that it's just the experience of fluff. It's how how to fluff. And sometimes you you just like you could be really short fluff and just kind of like just wiggle your pen around it. Mm -hmm. That's Get what that keep pencil case does. I think on 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 a lot of our pictures. Sometimes it's all it takes. You don't even need that. Like she has gone right know. into fluffing that those uh, keep pencil case. Th those uh. Those Kumiak Crusaders uh, <laughs> and curtains, and I suppose she doesn't fluff the floorboards. Rarity now has a fluffy dress. Um, 
<laughs> I just noticed the giant pwn and then giant fluffy pwn uh, on top of the photograph that LB put in. <laughs> That's funny. I would say if there's a type of fluff, because like fluff is weird, it can go so many different ways. But if there's an artist out there that you just love how they fluff things, look at what they do. Really break it down. See the shapes they make out of individual fluffs. If they have any speed drawings, that's even better. See what they do, how they create. Hmm. When... For some reason, my pen always is always really hard. I don't know how to give it anti-aliasing. I I just kind of work with. I, 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 it's not it, much. It's so it's it's there's no aliasing. However, that's pronounced. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> it's annoying. Um. Pressure. Sometimes I like to carve out the fluff, just get like big thick lines and then go in with my eraser to make it like way more defined in the fluffy area. Hmm. Yeah, because in inconsistency in the line weight there would help. Because it's uh it's again sort of showing that there's mess there basically. Fluffy ponies. I just have fun drawing fur. I think that's why I like drawing fluffier ponies. I know sometimes you can get like a very sleeker pony going on when you don't really give that fur detail, but hmm. it's just like, fun. Yeah, the difference between just looks kind of a regular fluff and like cute pencil case fluff. Like like when like what she put in the channel earlier, which it's like, oh, I guess too much fluff is a thing, and we're like lies. <laughs> <laughs> like that picture where it's just like a ball of fluffle puff. All right. Sorry, I'm back. Welcome back. I think we are actually done now. Okay, then. Well, thank you all for coming. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Join us on Discord and all those other fun platforms we have. Yeah, we got a lot of them. <laughs>